Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bay Area Baptist Church. Please stand on your feet as we sing I Thank God. We're joined by our teen worship. Uh, let's hear them out. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. I try with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, oh vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me. Because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Sing it out. I cannot deny what I see, got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning. Ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burdens and bitterness, you can't just keep them moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This way was son and has found his way. So why would he 
and what a great job our teenagers did. We had the opportunity to go down to Lancaster this last week, and Wednesday to Thursday and Friday, uh, got to go down there, then went down to, I think it's called Brenna Park area, where Knott's Berry Farm is, had a service there as well. But I want to say this just uh, before we watch the videos and, and move on in our service. If you gave at all uh, to our youth ministry for youth conference, you had a part in everything you're about to watch and all the decisions that, will, that were made. I'll just tell you this. We had, babe, was it four or five kids that got saved? We had five teens that got saved this week. <laughs> just great, great decisions. And then today at the end of service, uh, as part of our kids' ministry, our teen ministry, and our adult ministry, we have around 17 people getting baptized. And so... I was reading in, uh, in the Word of God, and uh, it talks about how the 3,000 got saved and baptized. Remember that? Uh, Robert's going to baptize today, and it's going to feel like the 3,000 today <laughs> just coming in. But you're going to see siblings. You're going to see couples. You're going to see just uh, families and people in our church. And I'm just excited on what God's going to do. And so sit back, relax, and enjoy the next few moments as we kind of recap youth conference. The Bible is not a past tense God. He's a present tense God. The God who was, is, the God who has, can. And God is just looking for some young people who will seek him again in this generation. If some young people get serious tonight about seeking the person of Jesus and getting real in prayer and getting pure with God, there is no telling what God might do in this generation.
I don't know if they said it there, but not a whole lot of sleep was going on either, so. But it was a great time. If you're a teenager or an adult that went to youth conference, come on up, and uh, we're going to have them say a few things. We'll give them some direction, and then, uh, like I said earlier, if you heard, a t if you uh, invested at all in, you know, getting our vans or sponsoring a teenager or in any way had a part, uh, you have a part in every decision that you guys saw, uh, and I'm so, so excited about this. My wife's going to give us some direction on what the teens are going to say. And in teens, if you guys come on up, you guys move, all of you move on up. And uh, you guys will just step on forward, uh, get the mic, and then we'll do that until they're done. And then we have uh, still a message, and then we also still have 17 baptisms. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Babe, go ahead and give us some direction. Okay, if you're All right, uh, so my name is Jacob, I'm 16, uh, I'm a sophomore. Um, I'd say my favorite part this year about Youth Conference was the van ride back. Um, we, we just had a bunch of fun, messed around for six hours. Um, yeah, and then I'd say something God spoke to me about um, was the night we were in Knott's Berry Farm. It was about God's power. Um, Dean Miller spoke about how God created this vast universe by just speaking. and our galaxy is a microscopic dot in that universe. And then our solar system is a microscopic dot in that galaxy. And then we are a microscopic dot on Earth. So it's like, we're so small compared to God. And the Bible says God holds the universe in the palm of his hand. So it really shows God's power and how much he loves us to bring himself down to Earth and die for us. Um, so yeah. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Henriquez. I'm in ninth grade, and I'd say one of the really fun things about Youth Conference was definitely the ride back, too. Um, we found a, bur a tortilla on the bottom of the floor of the van. I'm pretty sure Nico left it in there from El Pollo Loco. Um, but we decided we were going to play Tortilla Slap, and it was Jacob versus Elena. And he did a pretty satisfying tortilla slap to her, and she spit her water everywhere. It got everywhere in the van, so you can imagine. We had a lot of cleaning up to do when we got home. Um, but one of the things God spoke to me about was, basically last year, I was kind of doubting myself if I was saved or not. Uh, so after youth conference last year, I went to my room, and I did get saved in my room. And it, it took me a long time. I was going back and forth. I feel like it was the devil fighting um, whether I was saved or not, but I decided that I needed to get baptized. This is something I've been struggling with a lot lately, but Youth Conference, it kind of just sealed the deal like, yes, I need to get baptized. I need to show that I am saved, so I'm going to be doing that today. <laughs> um, my name's Olivia, and I'm in sixth grade, and one of my favorite memories from going to Youth Conference was definitely when we stopped at the gas station. Um, the two other vans, one of the vans came to our van, and we yelled to lock the door, but one of the vans opened our door, and they started singing a song as loud as they could. I was trying to shut the door, and then I started, sh and then I started screaming in their face, and I said, get out, I'm trying to sleep, because <laughs> we had the quiet van, so that was definitely one of my favorite memories. Um, a decision I made going to youth conference was, um, having more faith and trust in God because um, over the year I was really like questioning myself, am I gonna go to heaven? Is there a, really a God? So on the first night that one of the pastors spoke, he really spoke in my heart and I had a good time. And I'm so glad that we got to go to youth conference this year and I'm excited to do it next year. Hi, my name is Aiden Williams. Um, I'm in the 12th grade. One of my favorite parts about youth conference was the Nasberry Farm. I don't like roller coasters, but somehow I ended up on all of them, except for one. <laughs> so, yeah, and I forgot which pastor spoke on this, but 
um, it really touched me. Um, he talked about how when we're broken, we go to Jesus for help. And then when we get fixed, we go back into the world. And that helped me realize, like, I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm just going to stick with Jesus, even though when I'm fixed, I'm still going to stick with him. And that helped me realize. And that helped me realize, like, so a lot of us, we go back into the world and then we deny Jesus, even though he's the one that fixes us. And that, that, that touched me. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Sophia, and I'm in 11th grade. This year was my second year at youth conference, and my favorite part was the roller coasters. It was funny seeing everyone's faces on them because they were scared. And um, more importantly, the services were my favorite because God spoke to me more about courage and how in this generation it's super important to have that because people don't know the truth. They just go with what they want their truth to be or what they want, really. So... It's really important to have that because the truth is right in front of you in the Bible. And so I'm really grateful that I got to go. And thank you for everyone, the drivers, everyone who made it possible. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kennedy, and um, I'm in the 10th grade. And this is my first year going to youth conference. And I think my favorite part was going to Knott's Berry and going on the rides. And then in the video, you just see my hair just like flying all the way. <laughs> and then um, also it was seeing all like even younger kids and older kids just like serving for God and just like in the building, it was like so beautiful. Um, the decision I made was to start trusting God with my life because you never know when it's like gonna be your last time here. So I'm just, I surrendered my life to God basically and that's why I'm getting baptized today. And I just want to say thank you. And I want to say thank you to everyone who made it possible for us to come on this trip because it wouldn't have been fun without them. So thank you guys. Hi, my name is Ben. I act like I'm 16. Uh, I think my favorite part was just seeing all these teens um, loving the Lord and putting themselves out there. And I think it's, it caused me to think about what I'm doing in, in, out in the world, and I'm not putting myself out there. So it, it really convicted me to um, just put everything 100% into Jesus. And so that's what I'm going to do. Hi, my name is Michaela. I'm in seventh grade. Um, my favorite part was not very farm, especially the silver bully ride. Um, a decision I made was to serve God in my life, like to start telling people about God, because last year I got saved, but I didn't really mean it. I got saved because everybody else was doing it. <laughs> so um, two days ago, I decided to get saved and actually mean it and actually start reading my Bible more, praying more, telling people about God, like actually start living for God and not for myself. And today I'm getting baptized, so. <laughs> My mic on? All right, let's pray for them. Would you guys help me pray with them or for them? Let's pray. God, thank you for each teenager and adult Lord represented here. Uh, thank you also from Southern California, my parents jumping in. And Lord, for every person that donated, for every person that prayed, uh, Lord, this is just a testimony, Lord, of uh, what the power of what you can do. God, would you use our church to be a light? Allow these kids in their schools, in their communities, in their neighborhoods, with their friends, in their cities, Lord, to be the light you want them to be. Lord, we gripe and complain so much, but what are we doing to impact this world? God, would we have courage to stand? Would we have courage, Lord, to speak truth and to see lives changed? God, may we not be a generation of complainers, 
but Lord, that has courage to stand for you. God, we love you. Thank you for every life represented. Lord bless, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank them one more time as they come down. If you're 55 and older, mark your calendars and join us for Senior Connection on April 18th. Stay tuned for more information regarding this event. You can sign up and check for updates in our church app. Join us for Connection Groups this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have classes for nursery, kids, teens, and adults. This is a great time to connect with your friends in the church and grow in your faith. You don't want to miss it. The ministries of Bay Area are made possible through the faithful giving of our members and regular attenders. If this is your first time here, please don't feel obligated to give. This service is our gift to you. You can give online on our website or through our church app. You can also give in person by dropping your offering in the black box in the back of the auditorium. Thanks for being a part of reaching the Bay and the world for Christ. Thanks for joining us today. If you're visiting with us, stop by the guest table in the lobby to fill out a connect card and receive a gift. You can find more information about anything you've heard today by checking our website or app or by following us on social media on Facebook or Instagram. Enjoy the service. Please stand with us once again as we sing about Jesus Christ, our one and only living hope.
Father in heaven, we thank you so much for being a God who loves us, for being a God who is so great, who is so vast and big, Lord, that you created the universe, and yet you also created us, and you loved us. You loved us so much that you came to this world to die for us, even though you didn't have to, Lord, and we thank you for that. We eternally thank you for that. We thank you for the teens and the youth. Lord, we just ask that you be with them and bring this new generation up to love you and to preach your gospel, Lord, that this world, this country, this city might be saved, Lord, and that uh, there would be uh, a new revival. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28. And before I begin the message, um, if and, uh, any of you guys have been watching the news, uh, you guys know that Israel has been bombed again, and uh, they sent drones over. And so what I would like to do at the beginning of our service, or the message, is pray uh, for peace in the Middle East, and also pray for Israel. So please join me in praying. God, we come to you, and we ask, Lord, that you would send peace and prosperity, Lord, to Jerusalem to Israel. Your word says that Jerusalem was built as a city where the tribes go to give thanks to the Lord, our Lord, and we pray for peace within Jerusalem's walls. And Psalm 122 verse 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. God, we pray that Israel comes to know their Messiah, the true Messiah. In Matthew 23, 39, for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And so, God, we pray for the salvation and safety of Israel. And I pray, Lord, that they would be saved, Lord, before the time of the rapture. Pray for Israel's borders to be secure. Exodus 23, 31, And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. So God, we lift up the prayers for Israel's borders and those protecting them. We ask that security be strengthened and wisdom imparted, Lord, to the leaders and the soldiers and the IDF, so that enemy forces are driven out of the land. And God, I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 28, look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, and what's that next word? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. As many of you guys know, uh, my mom is from Guadalajara, Mexico, and that's where you get the mariachi. Ah! <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? Any Mexicans here? And proud of it? And uh, Mexican. And my dad's from El Salvador. I don't have a pupusa to give you, but that is the land of the pupusas, all right? And that, I, when I went uh, this last year with my dad, and we preached there, and we went all over El Salvador, we had plenty of pupusas. I didn't get like this by breathing, okay? And um, so I'm a mutt, all right? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Mexican Salvadorian, but I'll tell you, I'm very proud to be an American, and I'm proud to be in this country. I'm so glad that um, I'm Mexican and I learned Spanish and, and, and all of that in Salvadorian. But growing up, and, and just to be clear, I, because I know we have people from all different backgrounds, all different religions, um, just from all over the planet, all right? And I'm not here, just I want you to be crystal clear this morning as I'm about to tell you some stories about my life. So I'm not here to bash religions or, or in any way of how you grew up. I'm telling you my story, okay? So we're all clear on what I'm about to tell you. So because I'm Hispanic, I grew up, I got baptized as a baby. That was part of our culture. Anyone else like me got baptized as a baby? All right, many of you, wow. Um, I got baptized as a baby. I didn't know what was going on besides I was getting wet, and I probably started crying, all right? <laughs> When I got a little older, I went through First Communion. Anyone do that as well? All right, I went through First Communion, and I'll never forget one of the things I had to do is I had to pray to the priest 
and no way was I going to tell him all my faults because I thought he was going to tell my parents what I had done, all right? And so that was my story. I, I went through that, and I sang in the Catholic choir, and, and I did all of that, and, and uh, I learned some good things, and I, I went to church, and, and, and the good thing that I like to go to the Catholic church is after Catholic church, we always went to the taco truck. And uh, that's what I remember, because when I went, it was in Latin. Anyone with me? I didn't understand any of it anyway, especially the, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, I want to go to bed, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but we did that, and, and we did what, what we did. And, but there came a point when I was about 10 years old, and I'm so thankful for this, that our own Catholic Bible, as my dad was reading it, would contradict what the Catholic Church was teaching. You look at passages in Exodus where it says, thou shalt not make graven images, thou shalt not worship other gods before me. And you start seeing what the Bible says and what we were being taught, it just didn't match. And so my dad started searching what the truth is. And we went church hunting. I don't have all the time to give you the story, but we went to all kinds of churches. It was a very interesting situation. All right, I'll just tell you that. It was very interesting. Until one day we went to a church much like our church today, and Pastor Chapel, my pastor, got up. You saw him on the video, and he stood up, and he preached from God's Word. And just like my daughter told you her story, after one message that I heard, I went to my room, I went to my bed, and I knelt down by my bed as a 10-year-old boy, and I trusted Christ as my Savior. That was none of your business. No, no, no. That was 33 years ago. 34? Almost 34 years ago. And I'll never forget it. I made that decision, and after that, around November time, I got baptized. And so today, what, what I'm about to teach you is what the Word of God says about baptism, okay? A lot of people have misunderstandings what baptism is. So I passed from, from darkness, what I, I didn't know the truth, into the light. Acts 26 verse 18, it says, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So I passed from darkness unto light. Then I was born again at age 10, John 3, 3. Jesus answered, said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye be what? Born again. Except ye be born again, ye cannot see the kingdom of God. 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. I was also redeemed. I was bought back. Amen? In 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, I trusted Jesus for what he did on the cross for me. Amen? He sacrificed himself. He, he, he died on that cross. And that's why there's no Jesus up there because he's no longer there. He's standing or sitting at the right hand of the Father, amen? And he's living forevermore. And he's waiting for that time where he's gonna get his bride, us that are saved, in the rapture and take us to heaven and we'll be with him forever. And what a blessed assurance we have. And I love this one. I was adopted into God's family. Romans chapter 8, verse 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of what? Adoption, where I, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God is now my heavenly Father. Amen? And listen, it doesn't matter. As a born-again believer, it doesn't matter what your earthly parents have done, what people have done or said to you. Listen, God loves you. I love what Aiden said. He said, or, or I think Aiden and, and what Jacob said, God. Just think about that. God that created us in that little cosmos, right? In that little speck that we are on this planet. That God decided to become a human being, to die on a cross for you and for me. In spite of us, he loved us and he gave himself for us. So here we believe at Bay Area Baptist, according to the Word of God, that once we're saved, we're always saved. Amen? Amen. 
You can't lose that. God saved you. You and I cannot lose our salvation. In John chapter 10, verse 28, and I gave unto them eternal life, the word of God says, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Look at this illustration. If you're saved, you are in Jesus' hand. And God says Jesus' hand is in the Father's hand. And no one can take that away. You can't lose it. God doesn't say, oh, I forgot, right? We are saved forever once we've trusted him. A gift, what is it? It's free. And once I've received it, I can't and will not. God will not take that back. Salvation is a gift forever. You know the verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved who? The world. Red, yellow, black, and brown. We're all precious in his sight, Right? doesn't matter where we come from. doesn't matter, matter where, what, what religious uh, background we've been a part of. It doesn't, doesn't matter our skin color. It doesn't matter our social economic status. God loves you. You. He loves Mackenzie. He loves Aiden. He loves, well, he kind of loves Aiden. No, I'm just kidding. He loves Aiden. <laughs> he loves every one of us. What is he demonstrating? Hey, I loved you. Listen, he could have shouted it from heaven, but what did he do? He demonstrated it on earth. He came and was born as a baby. He was born to die. And he lived 33 and a half years, perfect, sinless, the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. Why? Because he loved you and he loved me. So what are we going to talk about today? What's the big question? Here it is. Why should I be baptized, all right? We're going to see around 17 uh, uh, kids and teenagers and adults and couples get baptized today. So why should I be baptized? Okay, what do you believe according to the Word of God? It doesn't matter what I believe. What does the Word of God say? Amen? And that's the kind of church we are. So baptism is a, it's an exciting first step of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to make it very simple. Here's what baptism is. It's an outward expression of our inward decision. Would you guys say that with me? Ready to begin. Baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision. Okay? Not a trick, excuse me, not a trick question. Everyone look right up here. What is this? A wedding ring. Okay? Let me ask you a question. If I take this off, am I still married? Wasn't a trick question. I'm still married. That's good, right, babe? (laughs) We're still married. This isn't my real wedding ring. I just wear this uh, as a symbol. But I put this on, and it's a symbol to show everybody I'm married, right? If someone, you know, is doing their little, you know, little eyes at me. (laughs) Never has happened. Never has happened, just so you know. But if they did, you know, I have this, right? I'm not ashamed of it. Why? Because I love her, right? it's, It's showing that I'm married. Because we're not Superman and we can't see into people's lives, into their hearts, right? He has x-ray, vi- x-ray vision or something like that, right? I don't know. I, don't, I like Batman. I don't like Superman. But that's a whole other story, all right? But, but because we can't see into people's lives, God gave us something so we could remember him. He gave us something called the Lord's table, right? We partake of that quite often, about six, seven, eight times during our year. And it pictures the death, the burial, the resurrection. But also he gave us something else. Uh, else. Right back here, you'll see everyone come down in a moment. It's called baptism. And baptism pictures the death on the cross. The person standing there, the water's this way, pictures the death on the cross. In the water, the burial, right? We don't leave them there. Amen? (laughs) They come up, right? And it's raised to life. And we see that. So we're going to picture this outward expression of an inward decision. Number one, I only have four points and we're out of here. Oh, not out of here. Baptisms, all right? So four important truths. Number one, here we go. Baptism, first of all, is an identification. It's an identification. The Bible teaches that baptism is a symbol. It's an outward expression. I'm showing outwardly the decision I made in my life, in the life of every Christian. Baptism is the first step. I love what my daughter said. She said, uh, I've been struggling with this. And one of the things, especially for a pastor's kid, a lot of times it's like everyone thinks I'm saved, but she wanted to settle that. And I was so proud of her when she was talking to us last night about that because she was saying, you know what? It doesn't, I don't, in a way what she's saying, I don't care what anybody thinks. I want to settle this, amen? And that's awesome. And she settled it. And what, what does she want to do to identify, to show that? It's baptism. And you're going to see a bunch of these kids, t- kids, teenagers, adults show, hey, I am not ashamed. I was talking with a couple in our church, 
at the altar an invitation during the first night of, of youth conference. I, I, sorry, a couple of teenagers. And I asked the guys what decisions they were making. One of them said, I, I want those around me to know what I believe. That's identification. I don't, I don't care if they think I'm a, a Giants fan or an A's fan or Las Vegas A's or whatever they're going to be called now or a Sharks fan or you name it. it, doesn't, it, it that doesn't matter. That's all going to burn one day. But as Jesus followers, are we ashamed of him? Are we courageous enough? Well, we're challenged, and we're going to challenge our kids at teen camp. Are we courageous enough to take a stand for what we believe? Christians, those around us, should know that we are Jesus followers. Amen? They should know. Romans chapter 6, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. And like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also will walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in likeness of his resurrection. All right. We have a lot of people in here and a lot of people online, all right? If you're a Giants fan, San Francisco Giants fan, raise your hand. All right? We have one, one fan. All right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> For those that are the Oakland fans or the Las Vegas A's fans, whatever, I know we're going through that whole thing. Who's that? They're very quiet because they don't know what their team's doing right now, all right? Uh, any uh, San Jose Sharks fans? Hockey fans? Yep. Any uh, Golden State Warrior fans? Any 49er fans? All right, got a little better. Any Dodger fans? I knew I was going to get that. Um, what do we do to represent our teams? You guys say it. We put their clothes on, we go to their games, we put their paraphernalia on, right? And, and we represent, right? And I'm not saying you have to go get a Bay Area shirt today and do all of that, but I'm just saying, when people see our lives, let me just ask you, do people see you as a Jesus follower? Could they see your life at your work, at your school, on your campuses, in your neighborhood, wherever you're at? Do people see there is something different about you? Baptism is our way of saying to those around us, Jesus saved me. I'm not ashamed. And we've had people in our church, even right now, that because they're Christians, because they're getting baptized, listen, their families have shunned them. When I turned, when we turned our back on the mother religion, how I grew up, listen, people said we were Jesus freaks, and they didn't want to do anything with us. But by the grace of God, almost three de decades later, many of them are saved. Some of them are in heaven today, amen? Because my dad was willing to say, I don't care what, how I grew up in that sense traditionally. I want to know what the Word of God says, and I want to follow that. And then I got saved, and then my family got saved, and my grandmas, which are in heaven, praise the Lord, I'm going to see them one day, and others in our church that have left, we're going to see them one day. Why? Because we have that blessed hope. Baptism identifies. It's an identification. Number two, baptism is for every Christian. If you're saved today, and you have not yet been baptized after salvation, baptism is for everyone. The Bible teaches that baptism is for everyone who has personally accepted Christ as their Savior. Baptism does not save or wash away sins. It simply shows our outward expression. I don't know how I got to do some crazy, crazy stuff as a youth pastor. I feel like I'm still a youth pastor. In my first ministry, I served down in Long Beach. Anybody know where Long Beach is? I lived in the ghetto, guys. I lived where it all happened. I would hear people in the middle of the night uh, tamales, tamales, tama I'm like, go to bed. What are you doing selling tamales at that time? And you hear screaming and helicopters above my house and cop cars all around me. And, but we were a lighthouse, the, the, most, uh, the, the, the longest standing Baptist church. I was part of the first Baptist church of Long Beach. Just a, a great, I'm a, a good friend with the pastor and there's just a great ministry there. But when I was there, um, I was in charge of the fundraising. And I don't know how I got that job, but I got it. And maybe it was my charming good looks. I don't know. And uh, that was a joke, okay? And uh, so one of the things we would do um, after one of the, you guys, have you guys ever done those candy sales at school? I think they need to ban those from schools, all right? But uh, I did that, and I, I was doing that. And one of the, the, the rewards you would get is I would fly the kids over to Catalina, have some lunch with them, and fly them back. And you're like, how did you do that? I had a pilot in our church, and I literally, I probably shouldn't have done this, so I'm confessing my sin right now as Catholic, so I'll confess my corporate sin here. 
I literally took control of, you know, I still had the pilot there. I took control, fly him over uh, pa pa uh, uh, Palos Verdes, Palos Verdes, I think. I think Trump's golf course is right there. Fly over, and then I would go over, and I'd fly him to Catalina. Give, it, give the controls back to the pilot. He would fly us in, and then we would have burgers on Catalina Island. You could have buffalo burgers and, I mean, just a bunch of other kind of burgers. It was awesome. But I'll never forget when we were there. You're like, why are you telling us? I'll never forget the little shop up there. And when you went to the shop, they had all this stuff. But one of the things that caught my eye as a Christian was there was soap. And this soap said, if you use it, it'll wash away sin. I was like, I need to buy all of it. No, no. <laughs> Listen, guys, what they're about to do in a moment does not wash away your sin. Someone asked me, did you bring water over from Israel? No. It's probably illegal, okay? Um, this is just water. That praise the Lord we heat it so they're going to feel really good when they go in there. It feels like a jacuzzi, all right? It's just water. All it is is an identification. All it is is symbolic. We're identifying with the Lord. And there are three important reasons why to be baptized. Here you go. First of all, we should do this just because Jesus commands it. Amen? If Jesus said it, we should do it. Matthew 28, 19, we, we saw it. He says, baptizing them. Jesus was our example. Not a trick question. Do you really think about this? I, I just told someone this. Do you really think Jesus had to be baptized for real? No, he's Jesus. <laughs> he didn't get saved. He did the saving. But this is what I love. Jesus did it as an example to us. He did it for us to identify with him. And we saw John the Baptist uh, baptized. And we saw how the Lord used other people to baptize. So Jesus was our example. And then next, believers in the Bible practiced it. They just did it. We could go on and on and on, but in Acts chapter 2, it says, then they that gladly received his word, listen, those people that heard the word of God that got saved, look at the next part, were baptized. Robert's going to feel like this today, because look at the rest of the verse. And the same day, the same day, they were added unto them, unto who? The church. About how many souls? 3,000 souls. 1,000, 1,001 3,000. Oh, my, his arm fell off. You know, I don't know, right? I mean, you think of what went on that day. Why? Because people responded to the gospel. I, I have heard this growing up. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Don't you want your kids to obey right away? I believe God would want us to obey right away. Amen? And so as soon as you can, once you've been saved, I encourage you to get baptized. So bapti baptism is for every Christian, and we're moving on. Number three. Baptism should be by immersion, by immersion. Say number three with me, right begin. Baptism should be by immersion. I told you earlier when I was born, a few days after I was born, I was baptized. If you were baptized as a baby, raise your hand again, okay? Okay, all of you that just raised your hand if you got baptized as a, as a little baby, including me, is not what the Bible says is scriptural. I've had this conversation, I don't know how many times in my office, I'll ask people their story. I'll ask them if they've been saved. And they'll tell me when they got baptized. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What does the Bible say? Those that got saved got baptized. That's, that's the process. What does baptism literally mean? Look what it says. To plunge or to dunk. To plunge or to dunk. Like I said, this is, I'm not bashing churches. This just cracks me up. I've been to so many churches. Look, look, look right up here. And I've seen a picture behind the priest or whoever, the nuns or whoever, of Jesus. You've probably seen this. With John the Baptist standing there, Jesus is right there. And who's ever seen this? John is sprinkling Jesus. Have you guys seen that? Okay, I'm the only one. Jesus is right there. And he's, spring, he's standing in the Jordan River. No, that is not baptism. Literally, the word means to submerge, to dunk, to go like submarine, to go under. And when Jesus got baptized, when we baptize, we go under. Because it pictures the death, the burial, the resurrection. Do you guys have a picture of that by any chance? Just so I can show. No, sorry. The baptism pictures. Do you guys have those? So you see the picture here, the, the, the death, right? The water's going this way. The person's standing there. It pictures the death, the burial when they go under, and then the resurrection, right? And praise the Lord that Jesus resurrected. Amen? This would be the last time we do baptism services if we just stopped on the death part. You'll get that later, okay? Um, that would be bad, but that's why we do it. Well, guys, I had the opportunity, and we're, we're Lord willing, and you guys got to pray with me for Israel. 
Lord willing, we're going back next year, okay? I had a friend that was just there, and um, even with everything going on, everything's been good in the areas that we would spend time in. But when we were in Israel, one of the coolest opportunities, I got to baptize our group that we were there, but one of them was my mom. Would you guys show a picture? And uh, that's my mom. She was with us at youth conference. That is literally the Jordan River. If you know anything about me, I'm a neat freak, and I hate germs and all that. Look at that water for a second. I, had a, I almost had a panic attack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it, it was nasty, but I'm telling you, it was one of the coolest experiences to baptize my mom. And then do you have my dad up there? And you probably won't tell us apart on that one because we look like twins. And I uh, got to baptize my dad. My dad baptized me. Do, you, do we have that video real quick, just of me baptizing my mom? Do we have that? Check this out. There's Jay right there with the little haircut right there, if you see that. <laughs> look at that. And uh, there was a, just a lot of us. There's people all over over here. And that's my mom there getting baptized. It was awesome. Just sy- symbolic. And then can you show us the picture of our whole group? Um, that was just some of them that were in our group. And we baptized there in the Jordan. Uh, when we go to Greece at the end of this year, we'll baptize as well in Greece. There was a, a spot there where there was a special baptism. And so we'll do that as well that we'll talk about. But I'm just telling you, it, it's, it's a symbol. It's, it, it's, it's being an example. Guys, I'm just going to move on. I'm going to skip. There's a whole section there, but I'm going to skip to number four, okay? And because I, I know we have a lot of baptism. Number four, baptism should take place right after salvation, right after salvation. The Bible, baptism always took place right after. Look at Acts chapter 16. I want you to see this. And brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, what's that next word? Believe. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in the house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. And they took them, look what it says here, the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, washed their clothes, and then they were baptized, he and all his, all those that got saved straightway. And we saw this in Acts 2.41. Then they that gladly received his word were what? Were baptized. So this is a symbol. It's, it's following what the word of God says. And we could go on and on and on. I just, I just passed by a bunch of verses I was going to show you. What am I trying to show you from the word of God that it's identification? It's symbolic. We do it right after salvation. I was saved as a, I'm sorry, I was baptized as a baby. But all that did is get me wet. That did not save me. If I would have died, I believe according to scripture as a baby, I would go to heaven, even if I wasn't baptized. Why? Because I got baptized? No, because I'm a baby and don't really understand sin and all of that. And if you look, what's, what's your, your proof, pastor? David. Remember when David's baby died? David said, look in the word of God. David says, the baby can no longer come to me. But listen what his words say. King David says, but I will go to the baby. What does that mean? One day when he gets to heaven, he's there now with his baby. He gets to be there. For us to have grandmas and grandpas and a spouse and a loved one, someone that has gone before us, the blessed hope we have is that we're going to see them again. Amen? Amen. But more important than that, though that's awesome, we get to see Jesus. We get to spend time with him and be with our Savior. Baptism is an exciting step of obedience to our Savior. And if you have not yet been baptized, I hope here in a moment, we're almost there, when we see number one, number two, number 10, number 15, number 17 get baptized, it would stir something in our heart if we have not followed him, that we follow him. I'm at the end, okay, guys? And then we'll get ready for baptisms. It was 1992. Who remembers 1992? 1992, and uh, we were in our original auditorium of Lancaster Baptist Church, three or four West Lancaster, right by the railroad tracks. And in Lancaster, who's ever been to Lancaster, first of all? Um, Sorry to my in-laws and my parents that are watching this right now. Um, It's not the nicest place to live, okay? Um, I grew up there. I'm thankful for it. And the teens could tell you it's just not the nicest place, but I'm thankful for it. One of the things about Lancaster, it is so hot. <laughs> it is terrible. In 1992, um, it was Easter Sunday, guys, and I was in the auditorium, and in that auditorium was the old-time pews. Remember, if you could picture the old-time brown pews, they were there. And then I was up in the balcony. Who's ever sat in the balcony? You guys ever sat? Teenagers try to hide and you know, go hide back there sometimes. And We were in the balcony. I'm telling you guys, 
the temperature must have been 100 degrees outside, and the balcony was like 200 degrees, all right? And it was hot, it was miserable, and honestly, I was just thinking, I want to get out of here. This is terrible. And uh, I'll never forget, Pastor says, all heads bowed, eyes closed. We are closed our heads, bowed our heads, closed our eyes. <laughs> closed my head, I don't know, okay. It is rather large. And uh, so... We prayed, and then uh, pastor said amen, and, they, and he had baptisms. I'll never forget this, guys. We're sitting there, and we're seeing baptisms, and then we saw this little lady get into the baptistry, and it was my mom. And I had no idea, and I don't even think my dad knew this was going on. My mom got baptized that day. And I'm telling you, not that I'm emotional or anything, I lost it. I'm crying. I look at my dad. He's crying. And we were just like, how awesome is that? That though we grew up a certain way, we, my dad was willing not to just follow tradition for tradition's sake. No, we're going to follow what the Word of God says. And my dad got saved. A little while I got saved. My mom got saved. My brothers got saved. Sometimes I wonder, Mike might be saved. I don't know. <laughs> And uh, one of my brothers goes to church here, and I'm just telling you, you know, I think of my nephews, and I think of family and grandmas, and I'm just telling you, there's something that God does in the heart of people that just say, God, I want to be used. And I'm telling you, this was over 30 years ago, and it was hard. People didn't like us, and people would reject the message, and people wouldn't want to spend as much time sometimes, but I'm telling you. I'm so glad we remained faithful because now there are scores and scores and scores of people that are saved that are going to heaven because someone obeyed the word of God. And this is what I want to tell you. Don't allow tradition or this is how we've always done it or this is how I grew up. I'll be honest with you. I don't care about any of that. I want to know what the word of God says. I was talking to some folks about their decision to accept Christ and Listen, for some that are getting, uh, that were saved and are stepping out, that's a big deal. And when you get baptized, that's another big deal because now you are identifying that I'm a follower of Christ. Amen? And so what you're about to see in the next few moments is just God's grace on his church here in the Bay Area, and I'm excited what we're about to see. So let's pray together. All those that are going to get baptized, you guys go into that room. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today and just for your word and, Lord, for what baptism represents. And I just pray, Lord, as we get ready for baptisms and, Lord, as we think of the message of the gospel, Lord, thank you for dying and thank you for shedding your blood for our remission of our sin. And thank you for being the satisfactory payment of my sin, but not mine only, but also for the sin of the world. And so, Lord, as we prepare now, as we get ready, Lord, with all heads bowed and eyes closed, first of all, I want to ask, you say, Pastor Morris, if I were to die today, first of all, I know that I know that I know, like you, when you were 10 years old, or 15, or 20, or 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, however old you, you were, you say, Pastor, if I were to die today, I know I'm going to heaven. I have that settled. Would you raise your hand? That's me. I know that I know that I know. Amen. 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 You can put your hands down. That's the most blessed thing. Those kids that said we got saved, that's the most important decision. Maybe you're here today, so Pastor Morris. I don't know. You know what? I've been following religion. I've been following what my life, what my family, what everybody has done. But you know what? If I were to die today, I don't know according to the Word of God. I don't have that assurance. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. We just want to pray for you. In our church, this is what they do. They pray. You say, Pastor Morris, I don't know, but I would like to know. Would you raise your hand right there where you're at? I don't know, but I would like to know. Would you raise your hand right there where you're at? I see that hand. Thank you for your honesty. I see that hand. I see that hand. I thank you for that honesty. Anybody else? That's me. I do not know. I do not know. All right. For those that raise your hand, this is what I want you to do, all right? At the end of the service, after the baptisms, on your way out, there's a little VIP banner, okay? That's for you. And I want you to go by, and you're going to go by that VIP banner, and there'll be someone there, and you say, hey, I raised my hand. I want to know how to go to heaven. And a man will take a man, a lady will take a lady, and we love to share with you what the Word of God says. That is the most important thing, okay? 
So if you're serious about that, go by the VIP banner right in the foyer and the man will take a man, the lady will take a lady. All heads bowed, eyes closed. Do you say, Pastor Morris, I've been saved. I trusted Christ. I know that. But you know what? I have not taken that next step of baptism. Don't be scared. I'm not asking you to do it today, okay? But you say, Pastor Morris, I have not yet taken that step, but I need to take that step. Pray for me. Would you raise your hand? I've been saved, but I have. I see that hand. I see that hand. Okay, good. Anybody else? I have not taken that. I see that hand. Thank you for that honesty. Good. Anybody else? I have not taken that next step after salvation. All right, for you guys, we're going to have a next baptism service. I encourage you, talk to us, sign up, and we'd love for you to be in the next baptism service. We have several people in our church that need to be baptized. So God, we come to you again. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And Lord, as Robert gets ready to baptize, I pray, Lord, that we would understand as a church as those that are visiting, that this water does not save us. It's an identification. It's following you. It's taking the next step, Lord, of obedience. And so, Lord, thank you for family and friends and people tuning in. And I pray, Lord, that you'd use this time for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. because I know who I am. I do this because I'm forgiven. I do this because he rose. I know no water can change me, but this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart. My life will never be the same. So now I'm proclaiming it to the world. And just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life. At this time, we're going to have um, the kids start, and so go ahead and have the first one there. Uh, Robert's going to baptize for me. As many of you guys know, if you don't know, um, I broke my shoulder three months ago. Praise the Lord, the healing's going well, but at the same time, if anything goes bad, it could start the whole process all over again. And so Robert's going to be part of the biggest baptism I've ever been a part of in the three churches I've been a part of, and so this is going to be awesome. So right now, we have Stella. And Stella, if I could have you come in, and Stella and the Maruquin family uh, have been just a huge blessing by coming to our church, and Stella uh, got saved here in our church, and today wanted to identify with the Lord, and there's her family there in the back. And if you guys want to move, you guys can move. This is like a kindergarten graduation. If you guys want to move and take pictures and video, feel free. We have a camera guy. Do you guys see them? Yep, in there. It'll be online, and we also have some pictures being taken as well. So, uh, Robert? accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in newness of life. So lay your hands. Can you guys hear me on the mic? Okay. At this time, we have uh, Leah is going to come down. No? Okay. Mackenzie? The Tanamuras? All right, the Tanamura clan, all right? Tanamuras, uh, uh, you guys have heard Chris while I uh, got hurt. Chris 
His wife has played with uh, for us as well, and they've been a great family. I think some of their family is here in the front. And uh, these are the Tanimuras. They're coming together. This is three of five. Is that right? Or of the hundred kids that they have? No, no, of the five. <laughs> and uh, so excited. We have Mackenzie, we have ja uh, Jacqueline, and we have Carter that are getting baptized today. Robert? All right. Jacqueline, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in likeness of his death, raised in the of life. Mackenzie, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace and newness of life. Carter, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the life of his death, raised in the newness of life. I love what God's doing in our kids' ministry. And let's just give Rebecca and all those that serve in our kids a round of applause. Just with Uh, another thing I'm very thankful for, um, actually, let's do this. If you work with our kids' ministry at all, would you stand for a second? Just if you work with our kids' ministry. I know we have some here over there at all. If you work nursery, kids, any, let's give them a round of applause for serving with our kids. If you serve with our youth ministry, our team ministry, would you stand for a second? If you serve with our youth ministry, and let's give them a round of applause for serving with our teens. We had some people in the back one like this, and uh, so, so thankful for our youth ministry and those that serve, and we've had uh, Kennedy and Aiden been coming, and if I remember this story, as they come down, uh, Robert, um, if I remember correctly, some of our teenagers invited Kennedy, is this right, babe? I think invited Kennedy. Kennedy then told us of her brother, and we said, he's going to start coming, and I don't know how, I don't know when, he started coming. And they got saved, and God's been working their lives, and I'm so excited uh, for them too. And they've been such a blessing to me. We've adopted them as part of our family sometimes, and uh, so we spend a lot of time with them. So thankful for them, and so they're going to identify with Christ today. Kennedy, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, I have. Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his birth. Raised in the midst of God. Aiden, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised in the midst of God. They A did not want to get baptized? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, next, do we have Michaela? Is that, who's next? I think it's Michaela. And uh, Michaela and her family have been coming and been faithful. And uh, not too long ago, we saw uh, one of uh, her siblings get baptized. And uh, she's going to identify, you heard her give her testimony up here and how she, she got saved or made a profession at camp. Then she came at youth conference, wanted to make sure she, she was truly saved, and then today she wants to identify. Michaela, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of the Son, buried in the of the And then we have uh, Naomi, and uh, the Resplendors have been a part of our church uh, for a while now, and I had one of their teens already grow up, and now he's one of our, and our young adults, and, and some other siblings uh, in our youth group. And uh, Naomi also trusted the Lord as her Savior, 
and also wants to identify. Naomi, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the life of the Grace and newness of life. And then we have Olivia, and Olivia's coming up. And the Sorrentinos, we've known, oh, my soul, forever. And our kids grew up together, went to kinder, preschool, kindergarten together, and known them for a long, long time. And uh, it was awesome to hear Olivia talk about her journey. And then today, she wants to identify with the Lord and so proud of her. Olivia, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury the life of the Son. And so kids ministry, teen ministry, now the adults, all right? And uh, so we're going to have a couple uh, going to come. Oh, sorry, yes. One more teenager, mine. <laughs> Mackenzie, sorry, Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie, um, you heard her testimony, got saved after youth conference last year and um, been battling with get, trying to get baptized and she just said, I'm just going to do it, and I'm just going to obey the Lord. Kind of what I talked about, right? The process of salvation, baptism. And sometimes I think even as a, a pastor's kid sometimes might feel pressure in so many different ways. And I'm, I was so glad last night we got a little emotional there on the couch, but that she just wants to follow the Lord in baptism. So, so proud of her. Mackenzie? Mackenzie, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Mm -hmm. Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of death, and the of life. Now the adults, sorry about that. Um, we're gonna have uh, uh, Sai and Kalia come out, and this is a couple. I encourage many of you to take them out to lunch and hear their story, and I'll just give you a quick story. Uh, Sandy, is she here? Sandy. Sandy, right here. Sandy came, and you need to take her out and have a meal with her and hear her story. Uh, she got saved, and it was a bizarre Sunday for us. But she got saved, and after she got saved, we said, God's going to use you. And her kids have been coming. And then her brother got saved, and her sister-in-law got saved. I'm just telling you, it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. And so I met with them in my office, and Kalia, I could see she wanted to trust Christ, but she was not ready. And I was preaching right here on Sunday, and Kalia was right there. And I'll never forget, I was preaching, I was preaching, and I called the invitation. And then when I said, who would like to trust Christ, Kalia's hand went up. And I said, there you go. And it's awesome to see what God is doing. And so they want to identify with the Lord. Kalia, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the likeness of the Son. Praise the name of the Son. Sly, do you accept Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise in the likeness of his death. Praise the newness of life. Michael. So this next gentleman is Michael. Uh, I, when Mike came to our church, I said, Mike, how do you hear about our church? He says, I've been to your house. And I'm like, you've been to my house? Well, we do a big um, harvest festival type thing in front of our house. You guys have seen it, jump houses and movies and all this stuff in front food. And he says, I've been to your house. And he went and he's been a part of that. And he came to our service. And after I preached, um, I give an invitation like I always do, or I try to do. And he raised his hand, and then after the service, I said, hey, Mike, if we could show you from the Word of God how you can know, would you like to know? He said, yes. And um, I'll never forget this, Mike. You prayed, and I did not expect this. He got a little emotional, which then you know what happens to me. I got emotional, and uh, was just a beautiful picture of just seeing Christ all over him. And so today he wants to identify. I think his family's here in the back, and he wants to identify with the Lord. 
All right, Michael, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the of life. The next one is Paul, and uh, many of you guys have probably had Paul help you with the seed or, or something like that, and his friend is here in the back. And Paul's been a blessing. He's, he comes early. He's here even before I get here, so you know he's dedicated, and uh, he's been here and just been a blessing, and Paul's going to get baptized. I've heard his story. I've met with him uh, before, and uh, so today uh, Paul's going to get baptized and identify with the Lord. Paul? Paul, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bearing the likeness of his death, raised the music of life. Paul is new to our, uh, sorry, John is new to our church as well, and uh, John started coming to our church, and uh, I encourage you to probably take him out for a meal and hear his story. Uh, for a little while, he was an atheist, and um, he wanted nothing to do with God, and uh, then he realized, you know what, God has only been good to him, and so he came back to Christ, got saved, and today he wants to identify, so proud of John, and so John's going to get saved, or baptized today, not saved. John, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Upon this profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of your death, raised in the newness of life. And I'm very uh, excited for this young lady, Sierra. Uh, Sierra, we've actually known for many, many years. Uh, you guys know when we first moved here, my girls went to public school. And um, so we were connected with this family, and Sierra uh, accepted Christ. My wife was able to lead her to the Lord. And then Sierra is back in our area and wants to identify with the Lord. So proud of her. And she's here today to identify with the Lord. Sierra, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Upon his profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's give a round of applause for everyone that got baptized today. As you've heard me say before, the best is yet to come. At this time, before we dismiss, if I could have all the kids go back to, to class, I just have, you guys grab your stuff, we're going to get ready to go in just a moment. I want to make some closing announcements. First of all, if you're an adult, if you're a teenager, or you're if a kid, if you're wondering if I called your name, you're in that group, okay? You're one of them. Starting Wednesday, we have our Bible study right in here for adults. Teens will be in the building next door, and then our kids are also in the building next door. We also have a nursery. We start our Bible study this Wednesday, and in the adults, we're talking about the book of Jonah, the book of Jonah. So I encourage you guys to be here. Also, for those that are 55 plus, we have our senior connection. Uh, maybe on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, look on there. You can sign up to be a part of that. We'll have our senior connection. Let's all stand together. Let's all stand. If you raised your hand and you're interested in salvation, what does that mean? Go by the VIP table. Maybe, babe, if you could go to the VIP table, and she'll be there as well. If you have any questions, we'd love to show you what the Word of God says. Hasn't today been awesome? It's been awesome. For those watching online, thank you for being with us. If this is your first time with us, all right, your first time with us, in the foyer, there's a VIP banner there. That's for you. There's also a special gift for you. All I ask is there's a welcome card. Uh, it's called our connection card. If you would just fill that out. Uh, this last week, I sent 60, 60 messages of all the guests that came the prior week. And it was incredible. Uh, and that just represents families. That was 60 plus families. And so it was awesome to do that. And it's just, uh, for those that filled out a card, if you filled out a card, I prayed for every one of them. It was a stack that big. 
and many of you, it's family, health, uh, situations, and so prayed for all of you guys. God's doing a great work. Just look around. He's doing it, and so I think God's going to do some special things. Have a great Sunday. Love you guys. Congratulate someone that got baptized. You're dismissed. <laughs>